I'm Nicholas Vallesey here at the Trump International Hotel in Washington interviewing guests at former White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer's book launch event. What story during your time as Press Secretary in the Trump administration, what story sticks out to you as the most uh, factually inaccurate, the story that you were most critical of when you look back? Because there's a lot of talk about fake news right, right now in the Trump administration. What do you I, think? I think there's a lot of examples in the book, um, and, and you know I don't know that you can pick the best. They, some of them impacted me personally. Some of them impacted the president or the White House or others. Uh, so I don't, I don't know that I want to sit here and judge, but I think there's a lot of examples in the book that people can judge for themselves uh, what they think. A lot of people have focused on the inauguration situation right. with the crowd size. Right. Take us through the process of how you arrived at the decision to go to the podium and, and speak about the issue like you did. Did you push back on it at all with the president? What was the process? Like, um, you know, look, I've said on this a uh, lot that my job was to give the president the best advice and counsel I could and ultimately he's the decider. Um, and that particular day I go through in very painstakingly detail um, why I think that day you know we could have done a better job. And I wanted to ask you too what you think about the conservatives who are criticizing Fox News for coming to the defense of CNN's White House reporter who was barred from that event uh, at the White House. What do you think? I think there's, uh, there's two issues at hand. One is um, making sure that we maintain an open and accessible um, government for the press corps to cover the actions. Uh, but second, I think that there is clearly a discussion that needs to happen about the level of respect and professionalism with respect to journalist behavior. And what, what do you, can you give an example you mean by that? I, I mean, I just think that when you get up and yell at the President of the United States, as one member and a couple in particular have done, uh, that's just a level of disrespect. When you're having a press conference, especially with another foreign leader, uh, it's the President that leader that calls on, on folks and they put their hand up and act like uh, responsible, respectful adults. And too often it's now turning into a circus where these members of the media are jumping up and down. I've seen President Trump answer shouted questions. Uh, right, quite I, I think I, I, the protocol is uh, that when the president says thank you, in that case, I think he said it like four times. The staff was very clear over and over again, thank you, and ushering them out. There's a protocol that's existed for a long time, and uh, you know, I, obviously, I have not sat back and really thought about it, but um, I do think that there's enough examples where there's uh, a lack of civility and decorum that's due to the office. I wanted to ask you about this situation today uh, that's in the news about the White House reporter from CNN not being what allowed news? to go into the uh, yeah. event of the White House. Well, I'm here What's for Sean Spicer, press secretary, did a great job in the White House and now has written a book. I'm here to support him. So I'm not going to talk about any one reporter. I'm just going to tell you that we obviously are not afraid of questions. Donald Trump is not afraid to answer questions. It's part of how he got elected. He takes his case directly to the people. I'm certainly not afraid to answer anybody's questions. But there's a big difference between asking a question and being politely asked to leave the Oval Office and asking six more questions. There's an intransigence and a disrespect involved there. It's not about asking questions. Nobody was banned. I wasn't there. I wasn't a part of it. But I can tell you, it wasn't about asking a question. We answer questions. I'm answering your questions right now about off topic. I'm here for Sean's book. But it's about an intransigence and a disrespect for being a guest in the Oval Office. The, those questions could have been asked at a different time. They were in there, the press was asked to leave, the press was asked to leave again and again and again and again. Fox News coming to the defense of CNN over this issue with the White House reporter being barred from that event. What did you think seeing both media outlets come together? Was it right for Fox uh, to defend them? Because we're seeing conservatives, some conservatives are actually upset that they're defending CNN. Well, like, I, don't, I don't work for Fox. Um, you know, the... The press secretary put out a statement uh, about this matter. I don't have anything to add to it. And what do you think about the the questions when you shout a question to the to the president? Is that an appropriate uh, time to get an answer, a newsworthy I, I, I question? I think that this president is one of the most accessible ever, and I think he takes a lot of questions from reporters in many settings, and that's probably not the best way to uh, ask a question in most settings. So, Reporting in Washington, I'm Nicholas Palacy.